Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is the fifth part of this chapter, Newton's second law and applications. At the end of this part, you're going to be able to derive the equations of motion of a freely falling object and mainly the vertical launching. It's good to remember, in the last video, we said that a free falling object is any object moving under the action of its weight only and in a freely falling object the motion doesn't depend on the mass and the shape of the object. At the beginning I would like to watch with you this small part of a video where this man released a watermelon and a cantaloupe to see which one will reach ground first they reached at the same time. Even though a resistance exists, watermelon and the cantaloupe hit the ground together. Why do you think this happened? Follow up with us to answer this question later in this video. We have mentioned in the last video that we have different cases to study in a free-falling body. We discussed the experiments of a vertical launching and now in this video we're going to study it deeply in an analytical way. In all our study in this chapter, we will neglect the friction unless otherwise indicated. We can distinguish between the three cases in vertical motion. Vertical downward motion without initial velocity vertical downward motion with initial velocity, vertical upward motion with initial velocity. But what they have in common that in all cases the only force acting on the object in motion is the gravitational force or its weight, then it is a free fall situation. We will focus on the study of the second case, the downward motion with initial velocity. Vertical downward motion with initial velocity. This boy released a ball vertically downward with initial velocity. We start our study with defining the system, which is ball. What are the forces acting on the ball? We have the weight, mg. And the condition to have a free fall body is that air resistance should be negligible against the weight of the ball. So, let's apply Newton's second law on the ball while neglecting air resistance. What happens? Sum of F external equals to MA vector, where the sum of forces is just MG vector equals to MA vector. Therefore, A vector equals to G vector. We know that G vector is all the time directed downward toward the center of Earth. And taking x, o, y, the vertical plane of motion of the ball, where y axis is vertical and directed positively in the same direction of motion, while x axis is directed positively to the left, it's clear that there is nothing to be studied along x axis since there is no motion on this axis. Then we can write g vector as 0i vector plus g j vector. As a result, ax is 0 and ay is just g. What about v vector and r vector? We're going to use the antiderivative table that we have mentioned in the last video. What about vx? We know that the antiderivative of 0 is just constant, but to find this constant, we should write the initial conditions. R0 vector equals to 0i plus 0j since the ball started from the origin of the x, o, y plane. What about V0 vector? We have V0x is 0, there is no motion along x-axis, but along y we have V0y equals to V0. Now, going back to the table, we find that Vx is just constant and it's zero because there is no motion along x. x equals to 
constant because it's the antiderivative of zero and also it is zero while along y-axis vy is the antiderivative of the constant g then it is written as good gt plus v zero where v zero here is the constant after making antiderivative what about the y component it is the antiderivative of gt plus v zero starting with gt the antiderivative of gt is gt squared over 2 since we added 1 to the exponent and we divided by 2 the new exponent the other part which is v0 it is constant so the antiderivative of the constant is v0t finally plus constant which is y0 going back to the initial conditions we have y0 equals to 0 and finally the expression is half gt squared plus v0t it's important here to mention that the y position is determined by two factors the first one related to g half gt squared and the other one is related to v0 which is v0t if we are considering the vertical launching without initial velocity the y position will differ here and it becomes just half gt squared another note can be mentioned also what if g doesn't exist what if you are in space and g doesn't exist in this case the position along y will be just v0 t thus the ball will be in a uniform rectilinear motion let's solve this application a paintball gun shoot a ball vertically upward paintball with a velocity v0 vector of magnitude v0 equals to 7 meters per second neglect air resistance take g equals 10 meters per second squared origin of the position the launching point o x o y plane the vertical plane of motion of the ball and the origin of time the launching instant where t0 equals to 0 justify why the ball is in free fall pause the video after each question and think of the answers since the only force acting on this paintball is its weight then it is in a free fall the second question determine the acceleration a vector what helps us to find the acceleration excellent newton's second law so applying newton's second law on the shell the sum of forces equals to ma thus mg vector the only force equals to ma vector where a vector equals to g vector then it is minus 10 j vector thus the acceleration vary if the launched ball is heavier and smaller no it is the same acceleration since in a free fall it is independent of mass and volume question 4 write the initial conditions for the velocity and the position what do you think good r vector 0 equals to 0 vector because it started from the origin and v0 vector equals to v0 j vector since it is launched with an initial velocity vertically upward finally derive the time equations related to the position and velocity of the ball now here we're going to use the antiderivative table good the acceleration ax is 0 and ay is minus 10 
and it's negative because it is opposite to the positive y-axis. V vector. Vx equals to the antiderivative of 0, which is also 0 because the initial velocity along x is 0. Vy, it is minus 10t plus V0y, where V0y is 7, then it's minus 10t plus 7. Finally, our vector. The x component is 0 because there is no motion along x axis, while along y we have minus 5t squared plus 7t plus y0, and y0 here is 0. Going back to the watermelon and the cantaloupe. Can you answer the question now? I will repeat the question. Why do you think they reached the ground at the same time, although air resistance exists? Good. Because air resistance here is negligible compared to the weight of watermelon or even the cantaloupe. Confirming on the main ideas of the lesson, you should practice solving antiderivatives, the examples mentioned in the video, and the application. This is the end of part 5. Thank you for watching.